Hello everyone, this is Stephanie. Welcome to another video. So today we're going to work on the Tila Driftwood Necklace. That goes with the bracelet that we made. So here it is in a couple of colorways. I haven't finished this one yet. Um, but it's a collar necklace. And it's done with the same, pretty much the same beads, except for the bugle beads, as the Tila Driftwood bracelet. Alright, so I'm going to clear this off, get a materials list going, and we're going to get started. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell so that you get notified when I upload a video. Thanks. Okay, let's get a materials list going. So you need some Tila beads, two colors of um, Super Duos. Now I put out a white one, but I actually used a cream, sort of a champagne color in this one, and I'll put that in the description box below the video. I just ran out. 11 O seed beads, some sort of clasp, anything you like. Uh, four by six millimeter check glass drops or any drop you like that will fit. I have a size 10 beading needle in this case. I have six or eight pound fire line, a little stop bead. I think that's about it. Uh, um, don't forget the Nomura Oops bead tray, my Ringberries mat that I have a coupon code for, Bronze um, Pony 10. Check the description box below the video for all coupon codes, um, all materials all places to purchase beads, every all the colors that I use, sizes, shapes, amounts, everything. So don't forget to click the down hour, show more, you know the drill. Um, the box will open. All right, so I'm gonna clear this off and we're gonna get started. Okay, let's get started. So thread your needle with about five feet of thread, put on a stop bead and leave about a 10 inch tail. So I've picked up a Tila and I've dropped it down to my stop bead. I'm trying to keep the the sort of the curvy side up. Okay, so I've dropped that one down. I'm going to pick up another one like that. So my thread is exiting here. Let me pull in. I'm just going to sew through the other side of the bead I'm exiting. Just going to put another one on. Back up through this one. This hole of this tila right there. Down through this guy. Like that. I'm going to pick up another Tila. I do that again. Exiting here. Sewing through this one. Through this one. And then back through this top hole. So this is what it looks like. So just get to that point and then we'll continue. Okay. So we're going to pick up an 11 0 one of our super duos. So I'm doing the outside color now. So that, you know, and my, it's going to be white and my interior one is going to be gold. So just choose whichever you like. So pick up a super duo, 11 -0, super duo, 11 -0, and a Tila. Just going to drop those down. This is what it looks like. And all I'm going to do is just go right back through the other hole of the tila that I'm exiting, right there. Now the best thing to do is just hold your finger on it, like that, and give it a little pull. And this is what it looks like. I'm going to pick up a Super Duo, so my outside color again. So through the next Super Duo, I'm just giving a little pull and it'll pop into place. Pick up another Super Duo, exiting here. I'm going to sew right through this bottom hole of this Tila right there. Pop that into place, just like that. Now I'm going to sew through the top hole of the next Tila and that Super Duo. Like that. I'm going to pick up my the middle color, sort of like the the center. It looks kind of like a flower, sort of the center right there. So it's going to be a gold one for me. I'm going to sew through the next Super Duo. Oops, and I think I have a plugged one. Let's see if I can get through. There we go. Right, you should check your holes on your Super Duos because that always doesn't happen that way. So when I put the gold one on, that's what it looks like. I'm going to pick up, I'm going to pull these teals over here, a Tila. 
exiting the super duo, I'm going to sew through this tila just like this. Let that pop into place. I'm going to help it with my finger and just give it a little pull like that. Back through this hole to connect the two. And through this hole, the next hole of that same tila. Just going to let you get to that point and then we'll finish up this sort of unit. Okay, so I'm exiting here. I'm going to pick up a super duo and sew through this super duo. Pick up a super duo. I'm going to sew through the next tila like that. I'm exiting here. I'm going to sew through the top hole of this tila and the super duo. So I'm notice I'm just going back and forth, but you just have to make sure you're going through the right holes. Like that. Then I'm going to pick up my last outside color of that sort of that flower. So through this guy. Pick up a tila. Exiting here. I'm going to sew through this one. And I'm keeping my tension you know, snug, but I'm not pulling so tight that I'm racking it out of shape. Just, you know, keep it nice and even. So exiting here, I'm just going to sew through the top tila, the one I put on, and I'm pushing them down so that they pop together as I go. So that's what that looks like. Now I want to get back up to the top. So exiting here, just going to work my way through this one. Through this one. And this um, tightens everything. Through this one. And back out through this one. Okay, so this is what it looks like so far. So it's really, you know, we're just going to kind of repeat things. And then we're going to put this last row on with the drops separately. And I'll explain why in a little bit why I want to do it separately. All right, so just get to this point and then come on back and we'll do another unit together. Okay, let's add on a pattern repeat. So 11 0, Super Duo, 11 0, and Attila. Just going to drop those down. I'm going to sew through the other side of the tila. I'm going to pick up a super duo. Sew through this super duo. And pick up a super duo. I'm going to sew through the bottom hole of this tila right here. Just make sure you're sewing through the right holes, otherwise, it's going to come out all crooked. So just the bottom hole of that tila. And then through the top hole, the one underneath it, and the bottom hole of the super duo. Like that. I'm going to pick up my little center contrasting color super duo, add that on. I'm going to pick up a tila. I'm going to sew through this bottom hole of this tila to put that on. Press it down with my finger and then connect the two by going through the top hole of the one I just put on. Press it down with my finger. Sewing through this bottom hole of the tila. Super duo. Through the next super duo. Super Duo through the bottom hole of this tila. <laughs> That's the wind um, hitting the blinds in my studio. Through the top hole of the tila, this tila, and the Super Duo. Like that. Super Duo through the next Super Duo. Tila. Through this one, a little press, make sure you connect the top. Now we just want to work our way back up to the top. So through exiting here, so through this one, through this one, this one, and back through the top one. 
Now you have another repeat on. So you're just going to keep repeating that all the way down until you have the length of your necklace uh, minus whatever the size of your clasp is and maybe just a little bit for that beaded ending. So, you know, you'll want to put it around your neck. I put it around my neck a hundred times just to make sure that, you know, it was fitting the way I wanted it to fit and laying where I wanted it to lay. All right, so have fun, get that done, and then we'll continue. Okay, let's get the ending on and then we'll embellish. So I've threaded my needle with a couple of feet of thread and I put a stop bead on with enough of a tail to sew in. And before I even started, I took my my toggle bar and my and my ring and because I wanted my ring to be in this direction and it's this one is facing this way, I just put a jump ring on. And this is a cool jump ring. It's by Beadsmith and it's a 20 gauge 6 millimeter jump ring. And these are beautiful jump rings. I mean, I could barely even find a pl the place to open it up and it closed beautifully. So I'll put a link down to where I purchased these. They're, Beadsmith is a, a really good um, quality jump ring. All right, I'm just going to sew through this teal right here. Then I'm going to pick up two 11 O's. I'm going to sew down through the other side of that one. And back up this one. Get your thread caught. I'm going to pick up two 11 O's. Go down the other side of the teal I'm exiting. And back up this one. Two more 11 O's. Got it. Down this one. And now I'm going to go back up just the tealas to the other side again. So here. This one. This one. Down here. Back up this one and the 11-0. Gonna pick up two 11 O's. Just gonna sew back down through the Tila, the 11 O and the Tila. Back up this one, up the Tila and the 11 O. Two 11 O's. Back down this one. Up. Like that. Two 11 O's down through this guy. Okay, I'm just gonna let you get to that point and then um, we'll continue. Okay, working my way back to the other side again, I'm going to just go through the tealas again. Like that. And then up the tila and the two 11 O's at the end. Two 11 O's, just go down the, the two tilas and back up these two. Two 11 O's through these two 11 O's. Oops. And then back up. These two, two 11 O's, down the next two, just like that. Now I'm going back, so I'm going to go up these two. I'm going to come down these three, so I'm kind of going to sew them together a bit. These three. These three. And through these. And at this point you can actually stop and you have your end or you can add you know a, a number any more. You can add more rows if you want. So I have four rows and this is how you can also kind of um, adjust the ending so if you need a little more space you can do it like this 
So I'm just you know, doing sort of the herringbone. Then I'm going to go back up these two. And then I'm going to sew these top two to get these top beads together. Just going down the next two, like I did before. So you could stop at the last row, or you can keep adding rows and um, then just sewing them together like that. And now we have this nice sort of flat, sort of strong end. And like I said, you can adjust it to, you know, make your necklace a little longer or keep it shorter. All right, so get to that point and then we'll put on the toggle bar. Okay, so I'm gonna put my toggle bar on. So I'm just, I'm exiting the end seed bead. I'm gonna go down these two, the next two, and then up the following two. I'm going to pick up two 11 O's, put it through my ring, then I'm going to pick up two more 11 O's and go down these two. That's going to fit my bar on just like that. Then I'm going to go up these two and so on and then down this group again and you can just keep going sort of work around your beads to reinforce that end and there you have your clasp on. Alright so get that done uh, reinforce your end you can even sew this thread in and then come on back and we'll do our last embellishment. Okay, we're back so now we're going to put on either drops or whatever fits there that you like. So I'm gonna I tried a three millimeter um, fire polish bead but it's it's going to push it out. You just want to make sure whatever is here is just going to sit there and it's not going to make a difference in the um, in how the necklace lays. So it's just got to just lay there and not push it open or pull it closed. So here I'm going to thread uh, my needle with you know just enough to get my get around because it's um, and with a stop bead and a tail because you're just going to be stringing here. Um, I think it's really pretty without anything on it. I do. I love it just this way. Of course, you're going to see the hole for the Super Duo right here, but I don't think you're going to really see it that much. I might just leave it um, because I just like it just the way it is, or maybe put an 8-0 there. And I've left all my threads because I want to um, sew them in properly because I really like this one and I want to wear it. So just bear with me with the threads. So here I'm taking a drop, and I'm just going to put a drop in each space. And I'm taking the ones that fit the best. They all seem to fit okay. So if you want to do your drops, yeah, you can do the drops. Actually, that's really very pretty, isn't it? It does really look nice. So I'm just going to continue on with the drops. Like that. All right, so get that done. Let me just pull this over. And just make sure they're just laying nicely. And these happen to lay beautifully, and they keeps everything nice and straight. Um, and it looks really pretty. <laughs> All right, so get that done and come on back, and we'll finish up. Okay, am I ready for the beach? I mean, I feel like this is such great beach jewelry. Um, so a couple of tips. Make sure you sew in all your threads. It took me about 20 minutes to sew all my threads in. I really took my time. I made sure everything was knotted properly and woven around. Made sure everything was sitting nicely. I didn't pull too tight. You know, just really take your time to do that. I know I don't often do it because we've done it so many times, but that's a, such an important part of finishing your piece. And it just gives you a beautiful piece that isn't going to um, come apart. So. Um, here's everything. I made these earrings from those little um, shell pieces from the um, Eureka collection. I'll link those below. I just put some jump rings on them and used the drops and added those on. Adorable! <laughs> All right. This was so much fun. All right, so take care. I hope you make this uh, and post it on Facebook, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.